full-time jobs during the first three years of this agreement and projects that they will make a total initial investment of approximately $8 million, which will include buildings and the installation of equipment. The proposed grant term listed under this contract is eight years, and the incentive agreement payments to the company in the first three years will be an amount of 90% of the county out taxes on real and personal property. The incentive grant for the remaining five years will be equal to 50% of the county out taxes on real and personal property. If the company at any time during the grant term does not meet the requirements stated within this contract or fails to pay all applicable real and personal property taxes when due, then the county can certainly terminate this agreement. Are there any questions associated with this contract? I have come to speak 
this issue, but I will. I might talk for Mayor of the town of Earl, but I speak to Chairman of the Advisory Committee for Don Gibson City. And is now a radio operator since I'm a child, I attended Hamfest. You know, we were fortunate to get the Hamfest back into Cleveland County. But I heard so many of my fellow amateur radio operators say, well, we still have to stay over in Jackson. There aren't enough rooms here. We have people coming in to see shows at that wonderful venue in Gibson. We'll have hundreds of people coming in to uh, visit the Scrub Center when it opens this winter. We don't have the amenities, we don't have the rooms for these folks. This is an important step. I commend you for taking it. I commend the development authorities for putting this together to help these folks bring these amenities to Cleveland County that we need to help us publicize what a wonderful place this is. Thank you. Everybody involved in this 
you know, it's, it, you know we're focused on, uh, and, and we know there's a need for, for uh, rooms in the community. Um, we hear that in almost every event that we bring in the community, but also I've got a lot of friends and, and neighbors that, uh, that, that work in positions. Uh, and that, uh, that's, that's a, a very good job, that's an honest job. And uh, those people are local people, and they spend their money that they make back in our community. So it's hard to really determine what the value of that is. But this this grant is something that we've been we've been talking about. We've been working in, on trying to attract um, hotels here for some time, knowing that, that was a need to be had here. Um, and uh, this is, I believe, uh, I honestly believe this grant is is what uh, is really. Really pushing forward to get this done at this time, and uh, the timeliness is, is just further uh, uh, explaining them that it's not something that's over a year period of time. We're not giving a year period of time. Uh, that's why it's two months. So uh, I'm ready to see what the others out there. Yeah. 
data center, uh, I would expect those three or four people to come from somewhere else and, and maybe move into the county. So I don't think anybody in the county would probably, except maybe construction, will, uh, will be getting a job in this. Um, and I noticed that, that 65 percent of the of the tax money that uh, that uh, we're going to be given back. That was a comment John had that you said the way the taxes was collected. Uh, and we then then we give them back a certain amount. We're going to give them 65% of the tax back. If you relate that to the number of jobs, 10 jobs over a period of 10 years time, that's $259,000 per job. Now, looking at it another way, this few jobs, if, if, if we're going to benefit Cleveland County, uh, how, how will we benefit Cleveland County from this, this, this project? Uh, it's not jobs. We've got a handful, just a handful of jobs and then a couple of papers we have made. But it will add some money to our to our revenue, tax revenue coming in, even though we're going to get 65 percent of the back. So that, that's going to mean we've got more money to spend. And when we've got more money to spend, I think we, we need to look at how we're going to spend it and to the benefit of Cleveland County. And uh, like I said before, uh, for, for a handful of jobs and the effort we put in, I like to see that effort directed toward bringing more jobs to people that are here in Cleveland County. And you don't have to work now. You need to put on a county people to work. If you look at the life of the data center, I'm sure they're going to bring in state of art equipment, cut the edge equipment. But in the, in the data center field, by the end of 10 years, all of that's going to be done. They're probably going to move away this one. And by that time, the data center is maybe going to be big enough to pick the suitcase or something like that. So if the computer industry and the, and the, the data center industry is, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it gets obsolete real quick. I mean, in the last 10 years, how many computers, I bought three or four computers in the last 10 years myself. They get outmoded, outdated, and cell phone. The first cell phone I had about 10 years ago, and that's just jumping out. So big data center is going to be jumped if I can't just do maybe So I don't know that we're going to look, look for long-term benefit from the data center. Something like deep fires and environment they built, that's going to be here for 40 years. So you give those big people 10 years worth of incentives, you've got 30 or 40 years of, of, of full-time revenue coming from money. I don't think we're going to get that. Just to speak to some of the things that I've heard tonight, I can remember, well, 15 years ago, how people said, well, when the distribution center is built and we're paying all those infrastructures, they'll be gone in five years. Well, that was more than, what, 12 years ago that the distribution center was built. Just would like to say, as a matter of public record, last year, the entire state of North Carolina did $3 billion worth of infrastructure investment. Right here in Cleveland County, we did $933 million. A third of the entire state's amount of economic development was right here in little old home Cleveland County. And so we're looking for those big jobs. AT&T alone brought in $800 million. And then last year, we brought in 1,000 new jobs. So uh, we're looking for all of those. We're also looking for hotels and other smaller companies to come in. Kristen would spend as much time working on something small as she would something large, and so it's, it's a process. And it's a great opportunity to add to the tax base of Cleveland County. And so I would tell you that uh, speaking on behalf of the 650 plus members with the Chamber of Commerce, we would hope that favorable action be taken on this one tonight. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your attention. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.
not just zero in on one particular field. We try our best to diversify and get as broad a base market as we can get in any product Thank you. I have a motion to second the floor. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the call, please raise your right hand. Say that, that it's going to retain, uh, Bethlehem will retain that fire district. 
the only thing that Kings Mountain will be responding to is structural fires in that area. That's correct. And if I understand correctly, and, and understanding we have been, uh, the commissioners have been wanting to get this uh, resolved, this issue resolved for quite some time, and I appreciate the, the, uh, the urgency and I appreciate everyone working on this, but also from the comments from the Chief of Bethlehem, they were not uh, made aware of this until just recently as well, and they have not had a chance to weigh in on their their feelings on this particular in particular um, term. Is that? And, and I guess I'm understanding that from talking to the chief back there. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess the question, the question I've got is if, in talking to Bethlehem, since they hear it, we'll just talk over Do you think that the ribbon can be reached according to the contract that Bethlehem would do something? I mean, if I can make a comment, yeah. Bethlehem's biggest problem with it is right now, you know, we take care of everything. Kings Mount would be taking care of the structure fires, which we would be responding to also. So Bethlehem would still be responding to 100% of the calls in that area. Yet Kings Mountain will be getting X amount of dollars more than Bethlehem, but we only get a portion of that 2% that goes into the tax district. Kings Mountain will be getting the whole 3% to respond to one or two calls a year, if that many. Well, our problem is, if we're still going to respond to even the structure fires, why deduct so much of our money? I don't, I mean, I, I just, I, we feel that like Kings Mountain, like I said, we're fine with helping those people let Kings Mountain have the structure fire part or the whole thing. But we just feel like they're getting overcompensated for what they would be doing compared to what we're doing. Through today, there's been five fire calls down there so far for us this year. One of which was structure related, which was just a fire alarm activated at a nursing home. Kings Mountain would have ran that call with us, or we would have ran it with them if under this contract. The other one, we had a vehicle fire, two motor vehicle accidents and an assist EMS, which we still would have ran. So today, through today, you've been paying Kings Mountain $10,200 to respond to one fire alarm. We would be getting a portion of 2% to run these other four calls that have happened so far this year. Now I know the numbers can change year to year, but like I said, to, to, to the day, they'd be getting compensated $10,200 to run one fire alarm activated. Here's the thing right you're already doing it for me and Lane, and you're already doing it for water and the tax deal. And the fire insurance commission has changed the rules of the game. And if we don't do this, we've got three areas in this county we've got to address, and we've got to address it in some form. If we do not do this, the King Mountain they have to get somehow to pay for a pumper at ten thousand dollars to get them. If they don't do that, then they can't structural fires, we've already checked it. about the seven fires in the last three or four years from structural fires. If they respond to the structural fires at three cents, you're getting two cents for uh, grasshoppers, basically. But you still respond uh, as you delay. The problem is that the number of citizens in that area they cannot get any coverage at all unless we do this. So how do we address this issue how do we address the issue in the other two years of the county unless we do something that may be a drastic change from what the norm is? The problem is, if we leave here tonight, you guys not being a brief and brief on this, if we leave here tonight without this board support, and it's dead in the water, King Mountain's not going to vote for it, those people are going to be back in the same place that they've been. So, you help me. Well, I'm trying to do what this consists of. No disrespect, but I think Kings Mountain, if they, if they said from day one when we first had that public meeting in Bethlehem, which we hosted for our members of our community, we did. They said from day one they would do whatever they could do to help those people, and we said the same thing. We don't like giving up the district to them. We just don't think it's fair that they get the whole 3% to maybe run one or two calls down there, and just basically you'd be buying them a better insurance rate. You're buying the people in, the, in that area a better insurance rate. I mean, maybe with ten, maybe with ten thousand dollars coming straight to us a year, we could do something else. Well, you want to? Just 
You know, I'm not talking about as far as this. Well, he's getting 10000 a year. You know, we, five years, we can have $50,000 bill to put up. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, I think that this goes along with what I was mentioning earlier is that, that this involves Bethlehem uh, to a great extent. Uh, they are still going to maintain the, uh, that fire district except for structural fires. And at this last contract, and with all due respect to everybody that's been involved in working this thing out, um, I, I, I think it, it would be a good idea to have Bethlehem or Representative Bethlehem in on those on that contract and, and at least have an opportunity to review it and discuss the terms uh, and make sure that they're their board uh, as well as the chief would come to with it. And uh, that being said, I would uh, I'd make a motion to table this discussion until that could happen. Can I ask a question? David, David, would there be some motion on the board?
it's probably the cheapest way we can go. My concern is if you were to in on the discussion and say, okay, you know, we'll do the mutual aid, we'll do this to set something up. I don't want to get out there and say, okay, you know, we got no man's land that nobody ain't going to. And, and that's what it is. And, and for the comment about taking out general fund, if we take it out of general fund, I think we open up something else. We got North Lafayette Street, we got a place that's not covered. We got a web on the north end, we not covered. We've got another place not covered. If we're going to start taking out general fund and cover it, where do you start before you stop? But I think financially, for the financial benefit and the cost of doing this, it's going to be the cheapest the county can come out, period. Like I say, I wish there was some way that we could say, okay, you know, we could go on with this and we would make some agreement and we, if we're going to have to make conversation, we, if we have to reimburse somebody for something, we'll work with Bethlehem and say, okay, if we do this thing, we'll make sure that if you do the responding for the other field part or something, then we would do something. Not to pull it out of general funds until we have to. And, and I guess that's my hope that we could sign you on and say, okay, we'll agree to this and we'll make sure that you'll lose nothing by responding if we have to do something. Uh, to me, I think that would be a good way that we could do it work things out. We can get the intern rating for the people in that district and whatever we do then we need to make a concentrated effort to cover the other people in the county. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Thank you. Right. We, 
I'm not going to let it close out. Uh, we moved forward with this particular case. It was identified as had gene damage and would be some of the value of the structure. Um, so we began with that process. Uh, a building permit was issued soon after that uh, to Mr. Padgett uh, in March of 2011. At that point, we decided just to sit on the application and see what progressed with that building permit. Um, we, in September of that year, we were contacted by WSOC, uh, Channel 9, wondering why we had not done anything <laughs> in relation to these uh, five properties. And so I, I responded to that request and never heard anything more from them. Uh, September 2012, the building permit expired and that was one year after our initial inspection. In October of that year, I mailed a notice to Mr. Padgett and uh, went through the normal process of holding a hearing, which was just an informal hearing in my office. And, uh, five months elapsed after that initial hearing and in April, we re-inspected the property and issued an order to repair or demolish. And at that time, gave Mr. Padgett 90 days to uh, respond. In July, that particular order expired, and now we are at this point of coming to you in September uh, with an ordinance to uh, demolish the structure. And you have it at your leisure and the opportunity to negotiate with the property owner if you wish to give additional time, or you can simply adopt the ordinance and we will uh, make bids on cleaning up the property and place a, a lien on back on the property for the cost of that work. Commissioner, any questions, Mr. Carter? Uh, no, but I've got some comments. Whenever you finish something like this, make a comment. Any questions? Okay, on this particular project, Mr. Falls and I went out to visit, you know, and, and we talked to Mr. Padgett out there that day. Also, he looked at that there was dogs in the area. We sent someone out to try to take care of the dogs. And they got to checking his property for violation of rubbish so forth under a different ordinance. And what I'm going to propose is something a little different. So we can, I would like to see us give him the opportunity to save his dwelling and talk to Sam. Do you remember Sam, did Sam lock his guy come out in the landfill? Mr. Padgett? I did not. Yeah, well, here, here he is. He issued some orders at, at your property. Okay? And, and one of it, and he set up a time schedule for you. He talked to you about the time schedule and the cleanup, didn't he? That was up to this morning. Would you, would you please come up to the mic? Uh, okay. Was that another came today at that Mr. McGee, wasn't it? Came out. One of the officers from the, from the Solid Waste Advisory. EPA at 12 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, well, EPA would eat solid waste. Yes, he talked yes. to you about the condition of the property, the stuff on the property, didn't he? Yes, sir. And, and he also set you up a schedule of cleanup of some of the debris and stuff on the property. He said he would. Yeah, he did. And he got a year, I think he got a copy of it, like all the lumber in the front yard and stuff remaining to be removed or covered. And what he said covered is in a shed, protected not just a, a tarp thrown over it. Okay, he said uh, all this all this would happen in front of the 30 days, didn't he? Okay, according, according to what he gave you, or he told us he gave you, okay, any tools, scrap, whatever in the front yard within another 30 days, it will be cleaned up. All the lines in the backyard, Shall be removed and cleaned up in 45 days. Any lumber in the backyard, stuff removed, and an 
another period of time. So this schedule gives you about 90 days to 12, 17, 2013. And when I was out there, you asked us for an opportunity to show your good faith effort that you would do something. And I would be willing to make a motion that we postpone this demolition of your building until the first year, which would be in January, if you will agree to buy with this schedule. Here he sent pictures along with it. And, and that's that's what I'm proposing to the commissioner that uh, Mr. Lockett do talk to the officer went out, they arrange this, they give him a schedule to clean the property up, then we come back in January and we check his good faith effort. And if it is, then I would say that then we give him an opportunity to repair his stuff. This stuff here is something you need to do on your own. This stuff here, even if we demolition the building today, you would either have to do it or the county would do it and charge you for it. Either way, it's got to be done. So that's, that's my proposal to the commissioner that we follow Sam's schedule and give him the opportunity to clean the place up and he comes, Mr. Carter brings it back in uh, January next year and then we'll, we'll lose from there. If he shows a good faith effort, then I would think that we should give him the opportunity to make repairs on his property. That's the form of the motion, Mr. I'll put that in the motion. The motion is that uh, Property. If we only deal with the land, how much land do we 
property I had talked with Ms. Rogers. Uh, she and her brother inherited this property. Uh, she lives in Virginia. Her brother lives in Henry. Um,
Kennedy County adopted the Carolina Freight Trail Action Plan, which identified about 100 miles of trail throughout Cleveland County. Occasionally, the plan needs to be updated as we begin to work on these particular trail segments. And uh, over in the uh, Kings Mountain area, as the Gateway Trail continues to extend for Crowder Mountain, uh, we have been working with the state and uh, federal properties parks in that area, and they have, uh, the three of those, have gotten together and decided to uh, allow the Ridge Line Trail to be identified as part of the Carolina Trail Trail System. Um, prior to that, in that corner of the county, uh, the only option we really had was to use roads uh, for future trails, and that just wasn't very attractive idea. So now the amendment, uh, both Gaston and Cleveland will need to adopt this amendment. Uh, the Ridgeline Trail, if you're not familiar with the parks, they're all three connected now by this, this one common link, uh, the Ridgeline Trail. This is the port, portion in yellow is, is the portion in Cleveland County uh, that runs from Crowders over into State Park and on into Military Park. So that's the amendment to our county plan is to identify this as part of the Carolina Trail Trail. Uh, your Gateway Trail and currently is now the 85 bridge, but this portion is what we've identified as our connection now with all of access. And hopefully within the next month or so we'll come back with
Thank you.